about the art and the artist. Juliette Pita's painting, Cyclone Pam II, 13th of March, 2015, shows a mother praying over her child. The waves crash over her, but a palm tree bends protectively over them. Its roots are able to withstand strong winds. The woman's skirt is modeled after the traditional clothing of Aramango. On the horizon, small crosses represent the lives taken by Cyclone Pam. Juliet was born 1964 on Aramango Island, the third of eight children. There was no school in Aramango and her parents could not afford boarding school tuition. So a family friend paid for her education. She was the first woman to graduate from the Institute National de Technology de Vanuatu. In 1994, she had her first exhibition in Paris. Her motifs were taken from the traditional culture of Vanuatu, but also from her current life. She works part-time as a fabric painter on sarongs for tourists and sells her painting in Port Vila. Her children, also artists, sell their paintings to pay their school fees. Welcome to the 2021 World Day of Prayer, prepared by the Christian women of the Republic of Vanuatu. We welcome our sisters and brothers around the world in the name of Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit. Mostly Malaysian people, but also minorities of the Polynesian origin, are the source of Vanuatu's culture, languages, traditional values, and spirituality. Vanuatu's islands are known for their black and white sand, beaches, coral reefs with colored fishes, lovely birds, fruits, and nuts in the forest. The environment is breathtaking as much for its beauty as for its vulnerability to frequent tropical storms, earthquakes, cyclones, tsunamis, and active volcanoes. Each island and village used to have its own chief and style of governance, its own gods and its own language. Women and men would come together at the faria, the village meeting house, to discuss and decide major issues. Vanuatu is a small country in the Southwest Pacific, a republic formed after the independence in 1980 from a French and British condominium government. Today, Vanuatu proudly waves its flag for anyone to read, In God We Stand. We have a short video to show you, the beauty of Vanuatu and the people who inhabit it. Vanuatu, meaning country that stands up is a Y-shaped collection of over 80 islands in the South Pacific Ocean. Australia lies to the west. Inhabitants are known as Ni Vanuatu. Most of these 310,000 residents are rural. Many are of Melanesian descent with a Polynesian minority. Port Vila is the largest city with 45,000 residents. Vanuatu people use just under 100 dialects. Children usually start with their village language or Bislama, English and French are used for school instruction. Vanuatu's flag is green, yellow, black, and red. These colors stand for vegetation, gospel light, the people, and the blood of boars and men. The emblem consists of boar tusks and crossed namale leaves symbolizing peace. Vanuatu has a tropical humid climate moderated by trade winds between May and October. Temperatures in the northern islands average 27 degrees Celsius with an annual rainfall of about 3,000 millimeters. Common natural disasters include earthquakes, cyclones, and volcanic eruptions. Rising sea levels threaten to erode the land. The World Day of Prayer artwork, created by Vanuatuan artist Juliette Pita, illustrates the weather and the resiliency of the people. The painting shows a mother bending and praying over her child during Cyclone Pam in 2015. 
The waves crash over her, but a palm tree with strong roots bends protectively. Three quarters of these mountainous islands, outlined with narrow coastal plains, are covered by natural vegetation. Primary lower forests include tropical lowland evergreens and small areas of broad-leaved deciduous. The giant banyan tree on Tana Island is one of the largest trees in the world. Less than 2% of the land is arable and is used primarily for cattle grazing and cash crops rather than vegetable gardens. This has contributed to malnutrition. Hibiscus, the unofficial flower of Vanuatu, is plentiful. Bats are the only native mammals. An interesting Vanuatu bird is the megapode, which lays its eggs in hot volcanic soil. Its young, which emerge fully feathered, can run immediately and fly within 24 hours. Sanctuaries have been created for turtles to restore their dwindling population. Colorful schools of small fish are a feature in many coral gardens and reefs. Nearby large fish include bonito, yellowfin tuna, and sailfish. Staple foods include yam, taro, banana, coconut, sugarcane, tropical nuts, greens, pork, fowl, and seafood. The national ceremonial dish is lap lap. It is a pudding made of grated root crops or plantain mixed with coconut milk and sometimes greens and meat and wrapped in leaves. Vanuatu ancestors lived on their own islands, in their own villages. Each had their own government, languages, food, styles of clothing, traditional healers, and midwives. Homes had thatched roofs. Although people had been living on the islands for 3,000 years, in 1774, Captain James Cook named the islands New Hebrides, as they reminded him of his Scottish homelands. Blackbirding was prevalent between 1847 and 1904. South Pacific Islanders were kidnapped, tricked, or coerced into working for very little or no pay on plantations in Queensland, Fiji, and Hawaii. By 1906, New Hebrides became a colony with a more centralized government ruled jointly by Great Britain and France. Political independence and a homegrown constitution were established in 1980. Vanuatu has a literacy rate of 64%. Secondary education enrollment was 35% in 2015. There are strategies to increase this figure significantly by 2030. Vanuatu's economy is largely based on tourism, construction, and offshore financial services. Big hotels and resorts are owned by foreigners. A minor income earning activity is Nagol which involves men climbing flimsy 100-foot towers and diving headfirst into empty space with nothing to break their fall but vines tied to their ankles. Others sell their traditional weaving. Manufacturing industries contribute only 5 to 9 percent of the gross domestic product. Education curriculum points youth to white-collar jobs. In the current Vanuatu democracy, the Constitution provides for gender equity, but there is limited political will to implement it. In the 2020 federal election, no women were voted into power. Women represent 40% of the labor force in both public and private sectors and are often the primary caregivers for family members. Gender-based violence is a serious issue affecting women and girls. Approximately 60% of women in Vanuatu have experienced some form of physical and or sexual violence. Access to healthy foods, safe drinking water, and adequate sanitation are concerns, especially for children in many areas of this republic. Most deaths in those under five years of age are due to malnutrition. There has also been an increase in stunted growth and development in children. Before the arrival of Christian missionaries in the 19th century, each island had its own god. They believed there was a creator somewhere in the heavens, and sacrifices were offered to that being. Christianity is now the major religion at 83%. World Day of Prayer was introduced to Vanuatu by two female Canadian missionaries in 1946. Current focuses are employment and educational opportunities for young rural women, maternal and children's health, and cancer. In 2021, we pray with all Vanuatu women. She said
Now that you have seen the video, heard about the World Day of Prayer, and heard, seen the pictures of the island of Vanuatu, we thought this would be a good time for you to hear the voices of these women who wrote the song called, It Is Time to Get Together. What we're going to do is let you listen to it the first time so you get some sense of their voices and the words. And then if you want to try to sing it, the words are up there and it might be fun. You might need a little break. And then we will go ahead to begin the worship after we sing that the wonderful worship that they put together for those of us around the world. Let's read together the first verses of Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build in labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. Happy is everyone who trusts the house builder, God. Amen. Let us be thankful for the great things God has done. Holy God, creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them, present in, present in the history of his people from yesterday to today. Loving God, on whom Vanuatu stands, we adore you. Thank you for the fellowship we enjoy with sisters around the world gathered for this world day of prayer. Thank you for the great, wonderful things in our lives and in our nations. You grant us authority, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and care for all our beautiful homelands. Thank you for the fertile lands, fresh air, beautiful sunshine, blue seas, and still waters of Vanuatu's islands. Thank you for the sweet melody of the birds, the sound of the land, animals, and the mystery of the fish and the seas and the rivers. Thank you for the waterfalls that serenely declare to us your greatness and power. Thank you for the sound of children singing, laughing, and shouting, and for the prayers and songs of the old and young, all of which manifest the joy of your love. Praises, glory, and honor to all alone forever. Life-giving God, receive our praise. Let us confess to God, who is faithful and just, asking God to forgive us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We stand before you to confess our sins. We confess that we have listened 
to your word, but have not acted on it. We do the things we should not do and leave undone the things we should do. We face adversities and challenges in our homes and nations. We try to build our homes on the words of Jesus Christ, but discover too often we have built on the sand. We want to be changed. Restore us so we may do what is right and just, Creator God. We confess that we have polluted the environment, harmed the sea creatures by throwing garbage into their habitats. We endanger the marine life and ruin sustainable livelihoods. We know we can change it. We regret, confess, and commit to fulfill the mandate to be good stewards of your creation. God, hear our prayers. God is looking for a resting place. Where is the house you will build for God? This is from Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1 through 2. We come before you, God, and pray you will grant us for your wisdom and knowledge. Teach us to discern the truth. Lead and guide us to live in a way that is pleasing and acceptable to you. Humbly, we offer ourselves to be a house where you can dwell. By the power of your word, transform our lives and our nations. Make like a household of justice and peace. Gracious God, we accept our commitment. Let us now listen to the voices of Rahul, Mathi, and Jack Linda, three women of Vanuatu. They will share their stories with us. My name is Ritoa. I am the second child in a family of eight. I left school at the end of year six as there was no money to continue my education. My family could only afford to educate my older brother, but not me, as I am the second born and a girl. One day I heard there was a sewing class for girls at a local center. I applied and I was accepted but my dad had no money to pay the fees. I was disheartened because I did not have my own money or finance to finance my studies. I sincerely desired to enhance my education, but there was no opportunity in a formal school system. Then I turned my attention to the church to fill my desire to learn. I joined the youth group, attended Bible studies, and got involved with a women's ministry. With this to determination in faith in God, I found ways to educate myself and even acquired skills to earn a living to provide for my family. I now make items to sell at the mama's markets where other women like me with little education can earn a living with this new skill. I care for my family, my husband and three children. I praise God for the blessings in my life. I thank God for being the source of my strength and for helping me put into practice what I have learned. I became strong and wise in the Lord. My name is Mothy. My little brother and I grew up in a single parent home. When my mother remarried, she left us with her grandparents. After my dad remarried, he took us to live with his new uh, family. After our stepmother gave birth to her children, her attitude toward us changed. With more children to feed and no room in the house for all the children, I had to find my own food in the streets and slept outside the house in a shack. I used an old copper sack as a blanket to protect me from the cold. 
Then I met some Christians who told me God loved me. I could not understand this kind of love in the midst of my suffering. I decided to trust. I trusted that God would take care of me, even though my family was not sheltering me. This trust grew inside me and became the foundation of my life. I am strong in my Christian faith and share my story with others that, that we should trust in God and God's provision. My name is Jack Linda. I come from a rural village. Since I was a young girl, I dreamed of working in tourism and Port Vila. I traveled to Port Vila to get a job in hospitality, but I don't have the training that's needed. I have no family here, so I'm living on the outskirts of the city. I have no money for proper accommodations, for food, or for returning to my village. I know that this is not the plan God has for me, but I don't know what to do. I pray that the rural areas of Vanuatu be valued and that young people find the opportunities they search for in their own communities. I trust that God will provide for young people to grow and contribute to the well-being of Vanu Vanuatu. Listening to the Word of God. Let's hear the Word of God according to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like the wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods and torrents came and the winds blew and slammed against the house, yet it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. And when the rain fell and the floods and torrents came and the winds blew and slammed against the house, and it fell, and great and complete was its fall. The main Bible text for this year's World Day of Prayer is based on the teachings of Jesus in Matthew 7, 24 through 27. You just heard that. Specifically, his instructions for entering the kingdom of heaven. For a broader context, the women of Vanuatu suggest that you read Matthew 5, 1 through verse chapter 7, 28. This is where Jesus took his disciples up a hill and gave the famous Sermon on the Mount, which if you read all those chapters gives us many directions on how we exist in this world of finding Jesus' kingdom. The end of chapter seven concludes that what was started in chapter five, which we know as the Beatitudes or the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. This is important context as we read what Jesus says about how his word should be heard and acted on. We have to listen and act. It is not an empty instruction. Behind it is the full understanding of Jesus' ministry and the kingdom of heaven. Let's recall Jesus' words, verse five, and I'm going to give selected ones from verses 1 through 11, where he's calling his disciples to act as wise witnesses of God's blessing. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Those are some of the lessons that he was teaching all of us. Jesus' concern for the crowd that gathered to hear them speak was teaching them about God and how to live better lives. All of Jesus' teachings in Matthew 7 focused on two things, hearing and acting, or listening and doing. Jesus concluded, his teaching by comparing wise and foolish builders. The wise builder heard the, and acted on Jesus' words. The foolish one did not. This is our challenge and inspiration as we make our own decision in life. Now, if we were gathering in small groups right now, 
the women wanted us to discuss three questions, mostly the two verbs that you heard emphasized in the message. The verbs are how to do these verbs, how do these verbs of act and do, how do they make you feel? Are there any other scriptures that, scriptures that you remember that affect you? Think about it for a moment since you are most of you are by yourselves. Discuss it later. The second verse, the second question they have is what makes someone wise and what makes someone foolish? If you're thinking about that, we know we all are wise sometimes and sometimes we're all foolish. But the lesson is God wants us to, to keep him in our minds when we find the right way. So the third question that they wanted us to discuss was imagine you were part of the crowd when Jesus gave these instructions, how would you have reacted? The conclusion made by the women of Vanatois said, let us rise and build our homes, our nations and the world on the words of Jesus, who reminded us about the golden rule in everything do to others as you would have them do to you. This is our foundation. This is the basic principle of our message today. Through the World Day of Prayer offering, women share resources with women and children around the world. Some of the offerings go to the host country this year to Vanuatu. A good part of the offerings go to nonprofit programs as grant money. In 2020, the following countries re received grants. And in Z Z Zimbabwe, a program to relieve stress and pressure on mothers and caregivers of children with special needs. In Lebanon, grant money provided funds to rebuild damage caused by an explosion to the School of Near East Theology. This institution is the key theological school in the Middle East. An initiative in Uganda provided a program for youth and women to have supplies for their mo monthly periods and to be protected during that time. Closer to home in New York City, the Jeremiah program provided education for single women and young children below the poverty line. The education gets at the heart of the program by transforming and encouraging self-reliance. On your screen, you can see how to give to the World Day of Prayer, U.S., electronically or send a check to the New Hampshire Women's Fellowship as we will combine it with other gifts and send one check to the World Day of Prayer, U.S. Gracious God, we thank you and worship you for all the blessings you have bestowed on us, for family and friends, home, food, and water. We praise you for leading us to be creative and able to support our families. We offer to, to you a small portion of these blessings of money and service. We dedicate them to the World Day of Prayer, knowing these gifts will be shared with communities in need here and around the world. Amen. Join me in the prayer of intercession. Everlasting God, the God on whom then you ought to stands, we ask you to help us stand for peace in our nations and in our families. We commit the leaders and people of Vanuatu into your wise hands. We stand against the forces of injustice present in our nations. Give us this authority over our islands and nations. 
We pray we can live in unity, love, and peace in the context of ethnic and cultural diversity like Vanuatu and so many other places around the world. Bind, Bind us, us together, together in love, love peace, peace, and joy. joy. We remember the people living in places prone to natural disasters and hazards of cyclones, hurricanes, and volcanoes. We also lift up our concerns for those who are suffering from addiction. Almighty God, protect the communities from disasters and suffering. Heal the souls of the people and help them feel your love. Your love. Let us, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We welcome God's dwelling presence in and with us. Let God guide you, lead you, restore you, and heal your nation. Let God's will be done in your home as in heaven. Remember, as we close, Everyone who hears the words of Jesus and acts on them will be like a wise person and their house will withstand the floods. Go and build your house on Jesus' words. We leave with these blessings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. All this is our strong foundation. We will follow Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Let us close with Till We Meet Again 